It's Thursday, August 3rd at about 2.15 in the afternoon and I'm here with my surly long haul trucker bike sitting upside down in the garage. I'm going to be replacing both tires and tubes on the bike today because I had a flat tire on the rear tire the other day. Both of my tires are really worn out and in need of replacing so I'm going to put some new tires on and some new tubes and get the bike back into running condition as soon as I can here. So this just shows the state of my old tires before I took them off. They're quite worn out on the top. And inside I noticed that the, uh, the cloth had become torn up a bit in a couple places. I think there's just wearing thin and getting punctures or semi-punctures from rock hits and things. These are the Michelin Protec tires. They're a good road riding tire thick and tough they're a 700 by 35 size today i bought some new michelin protex but i bought the cross tire which they've come out with so this is the michelin protec cross and you can see it has a little bit more tread on it especially on the sides so that should be good for riding on the local rail trails and gravelly roads and things a little better than the tires i had They've got a bit more thickness to them. They're not extremely light, but they should be fairly durable. The last pair I had were really good. I've ridden them for over two years over all kinds of terrain. So I'm gonna put these on and get back into riding. First thing I'm gonna do is clean out my cassette here a little bit. It's gotten a bit greasy and sandy over the last few months. I have cleaned it a few times in a very crude way but I'm just gonna brush this out with a thick brush that I have and get it a little more clean that's doing a pretty good job of getting that gritty sand and grime out of there and then before I ride it next time I'll uh, oil the chain and the cassette as well a little bit there we go that's a lot better than it was I'm gonna do the same thing to my crank here and the rear derailleur I'm just gonna move the chain out of the way and brush these metal areas a bit and clean them up to some degree at least the whole bike needs a good overhaul but this will have to do for now so here's one of the new tires and my tube here this is a 700 by 35 tube Presta valve 48 millimeter Presta valve I could have done with a shorter one but that was what they had at the bike shop this morning so my approach to doing this is I basically put the tube inside the open tire here, blow it up just a little bit so it has some form to it, has the circular form, and then I put one side of the bead of the tire on the rim and then gradually work the other side on as I go. So I'll just put a bit of air in this tube here to give it some shape. That's probably enough. Now I'll fit that into the new tire here. I notice these uh, tubes and tires are made in Thailand. So I'm just inserting this tube into the open tire side here. There we go. So we got the tube in the tire. As I mentioned, this Presta valve is a little bit long, but it'll be okay. Before you put the tire on the wheel, you have to realize that this has a direction of rotation recommended. So as you can see here, the V patterns will be going forward on the bicycle. 
so it'll rotate in this direction here. So we'll have to make sure we get that correct when we put it on the wheel. So this just shows the back of the bike here and you can see that the derailleur is on the left side. So I've got the left side showing the cassette here and now I can tell the direction of travel the tire has to go this way because that's the way it'll be turning on the bike forward relative to the derailleur here. So the first thing you want to do is line up the valve with the hole in the rim and insert the valve through there. Then I'm basically going to just start trying to put one side of the tire in all the way around first while holding it. You can actually try and get two sides in to a degree and let it tighten itself up a bit first because the whole tire is kind of loosey-goosey right now on the rim. But eventually you're just trying to ensure that one bead on one side of the tire gets over the rim. <sighs> And there we go. One side is fully over. I just have to get this bit of the rest of it now. And this is where it gets hard. But if you go around and try and seat the bead around other parts of the wheel, that usually gives you enough extra tension to take up. And there we go. The tire is basically on the rim now. Now I'm just going to gradually blow air into it a little bit at a time and bounce the wheel on each side a few times, add a bit more air, a bit more air, and hopefully the tire will seat properly. And you'll be able to judge that by looking at the distance between the rim and this white line here. If there's a significant difference in the width at any place, then you can be pretty sure that the tube is not seated or that the tire is not quite seated properly. That's not looking too bad and quite often as you put more pressure in it starts to tighten the tire onto the rim better. It says on the tire here that this tire can inflate from anywhere from 36 pounds per square inch up to 87 pounds per square inch so I'll probably have it in the 70 to 75 range right now I've got 40 pounds in it and it looks like it's okay on the last few pumps I took I could actually hear the uh, beads seating in the rim I think I could hear a stretching noise so hopefully as the pressure goes up I'm not going to blow it up or anything but uh, I think the tube got in there okay it's always a bit of a worry when you do these things yourself is whether you got the tube sitting properly but I think it is I might just put it on the bike now actually. I forgot to mention that when you get the tubes they come with this little ring nut here on the uh, valve already so you obviously have to take that off before you push the valve through and then you have to put it back on once the valve is through. Then before I put the cap on I just got to make sure this is tightened down. I've got about 60 pounds in here now and I'll probably top it up later but for now I'm just going to put the final cap on and then I'm going to mount this on the bike. So there we go, I got the wheel on the bike temporarily. Another way you can judge if the tire is seated properly on the rim is to spin it once you get it on the bike and watch the end of the wheel or the edge of the wheel down here in this area and if it's not seated properly you'll see it going in and out, in and out, in and out now this one looks good right now it looks very symmetrical no major undulations in its rotation 
Another thing to think about when you take the wheel off, try to note where the chain was on the back cassette as well as on the front sprocket. So I've put this back on with the chain in and around the middle of the cassette, which is where it was when I took it off. That usually makes it easier to get it appropriately aligned for all the gears and whatnot. This bicycle does not have the through axles that most modern bikes has. It simply has the axles that you drop into the dropouts and then you clamp it tight with this old style uh, this one's a bit tight to begin with here so I'm just loosening it a bit here uh, okay there we go that should be good hopefully let's centered this way as well you also will have to work it down into your brakes. I've got cantilever brakes here, so I just released this and opened up the brakes to bring the wheel down in between. And in the end, you might have to just do some minor adjustments up here to make sure it's not rubbing on the uh, brakes. Now for the front tire. This is a much easier process. There's no chains or gears in the way. So you just release it off the forks, take the pressure out of the wheel, remove the old tire and tube and then do the same process that I just showed on the other wheel. I won't bother showing all this because it's virtually the same process. You have to get a lot of the air out or it just gets too hard to remove the tire. Now I have a pair of little tire irons too that I use. To remove the tire, if it's too hard to do it by hand, you can pick yourself up a pair of these little plastic uh, tire irons that you can just stick down. You can just slip down under the rim and then pry it up in a couple locations and then gradually just scoop it off the rim. Okay, I've got the bead coming off. Now I can just run my finger under it. Now you wouldn't probably be able to do it this easy on a racing bike with a very tight fitting small tire or some other types of tires that fit very tightly on the rim. That's when you'd be more likely using those tools or some other tool. But you can see now I've got one full side off of here. Now I basically just unscrew this little valve ring again to get the valve out on this wheel well there we go I got the front wheel all done this one gave me a little bit of trouble because when I came to uh, seat the inner tube this part of the tire was sticking out right here at the valve stem and I think I know what I did wrong I tried to uh, seat this area while the stem was right up against the rim and I should have had the uh, stem pushed in more into the tire. Anyhow, I took off the one side again and did that. I pushed this stem up into the tire to make sure the tube was in there. What happens is the valve stem here has a reinforcing circular piece of rubber attaching to the inner tube here. And if it gets in the way, it won't allow the beads of the tire to seat properly. So I had to remove it. Now you can see it's pretty even all along here. And it looks good and round. When you look at it spinning here, there's no major out pocketing as it turns. No major pushing out anywhere. So it looks good. Well, there we go. Finally got the two new tubes and tires on the bike. I say finally because I thought I was done about half an hour ago or more. And then when I brought the bike out here, I could see that I had these tires on the wrong way. They're facing the right way now with the V-shapes towards the front of the bike. I think what happened, even though I had checked it over in my mind a number of times when I was doing it, it was because I had the bike flipped over upside down and it seemed to me like I had the V's going in the right direction but once I flipped it upright, they were going in the wrong direction. So anyhow, I had to take the tires off again and the tubes off 
and then remount them and re-put them on the bike. Anyhow, they're finally on in the right direction now. And I think they're seated fairly well. So I'll be ready to go again. And I'm looking forward to see how these new slightly knobbier tires work on the local rail trails. I think they should be good. And they still have a solid enough central area that they should be good rolling on the roads. I was quite impressed with the last Michelin Protec tires I had, so I'm sure these will be just as good or maybe even better for the conditions I'm riding in. Anyhow, I guess there's one thing to remember, whatever you're doing, just like the woodworkers say, measure twice, cut once. I had actually checked over in my head, I thought, several times to make sure I was getting them on the right way and they were still on the wrong way. Just because of the inversion of uh, upside down had to have confused me. Anyhow, they're right now and ready to roll. Hope you enjoyed that little venture into the world of bike mechanics.